Okay, this is the start of chapter 15. There's five sections in chapter 15. I'm going to be talking about energy and chemical changes. And the first section we're going to do is 15.1, chemical uh, energy. Okay, so these are the objectives. We're going to define what energy is, distinguish between potential and kinetic energy, um, talk about heat loss and gained in chemical reactions. I'm going to do some calculations, of course, because this is chemistry. Quick review of temperature is to measure the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample of matter. Of matter. So we're going to be doing um, calculations that involve temperature again in this chapter. I'm going to go over all this vocab here, energy, law of conservation of energy, chemical potential energy, heat, calories, joules, specific heat. And the main idea is that energy can always can change form and flow, but it's always conserved. So energy can change the form that it's in, flow from one object to another, but the energy, the amount of energy is always conserved. Okay, so this is the definition of energy, the ability to produce, to do work or produce heat. Two forms of energy exist, potential and kinetic. Uh, potential energy due to composition, that's what we're talking about in chemistry, due to its chemical composition. It has potential energy, energy to do work or produce heat. And the other um, potential energy is mostly a physics thing where we talk about it in terms of position, like a something that is raised uh, up, has chemical position, has uh, potential energy due to its position. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion. They give a little graphic here with the reservoir has potential energy. The water is built up behind the reservoir, has potential energy of its position. As it flows through the um, shaft here to turn the turbine, then it becomes goes from potential to kinetic. The kinetic turns the turbine, which produces electricity. Okay, so it changes from potential to kinetic energy. Law of conservation of energy, also known as the first law of thermodynamics, states that any chemical reaction or physical process, energy can be converted from one form to another, but it's neither created nor destroyed. Okay, so that's the first law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of conservation of energy. Chemical potential energy is the energy stored up in substance because of its composition. Right? There's chemical energy in the batteries in your cell phone. There's chemical potential energy in the gasoline in your car. So that's what they're talking about because of the composition of those chemicals in your battery or the gasoline in your gas tank. That's what happens. That's where we get the energy from. So it's important in chemical reactions, right? Potential chemical energy. So when, we, when you use your cell phone, you change that chemical potential energy in your battery chemical reaction takes place, it produces electricity, and it charges your phone, it powers your phone, makes it go, right? Turns on the screen, makes your calls, texts, whatever you want to do. When it runs out of chemical potential energy, you have to plug it in and recharge it, and then the chemicals are reformed in that battery. That's a rechargeable battery, has that capacity to reform the chemical potential energy connections in the, in the chemicals in the battery. Heat energy is uh, heat is energy is in the process of flowing from a warmer object to a cooler object. So heat always goes from the warm to the cold. Okay. So when you put an object in your refrigerator, the heat from that object, like a hot bottle of water or something, flows out of that into the coolness of the refrigerator. And the symbol we use to for heat is the small letter Q. Okay, so we measure heat with calories is a, a good definition. It's a convenient definition because it um, is one gram of water. It's the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So that one, one, one makes it nice to calculate things with. Unfortunately, it's not the SI unit of heat anymore. So we tend not to use it, but we do. It still sticks around because it's so convenient. It's kind of like atmospheres are not the SI unit, but we still use it a lot because it's convenient. Same way with calories. 
food is measured in um, capital calories or a thousand calories in one food calorie that would be a kilocalorie and a joule that's the SI unit of the measurement and one joule is only like a quarter of a calorie or a little less than a quarter so here's some conversions uh, to do that most of the one we use is this one in the middle that one calorie equals 4.184 joules and we're going back and forth between whichever way we're going if we're going from calorie to going from joules to calories we divide by 4.184 if we're going from calories to joules we multiply by 4.184 okay so the other ones we use occasionally specific heat of any substance is the amount of heat required to raise one gram of that substance one degree celsius so different objects have different specific heats and even the same substance have different specific heats depending on their state like water liquid water on this chart is the highest specific heat at 4.184 it takes one calorie you know that's what it was definition right one calorie that's 4.184 joules that's how many joules it takes to raise one gram of water one degree celsius the rest of everything on this chart is much less and the, the metals down at the bottom, they heat up and cool off very quickly. They give up their heat. They um, heat up quickly. So that's why we use them for, we use that property. It can be useful if we want to heat things up and cool things off quickly. We'd use a metal. That's why your radiator in your car is made of metal because it cools off. Your radiator um, and the fluid in your radiator gets cooled off quickly because of the heat exchange with that metal. Okay, so it wouldn't be a chemistry lecture without a formula, right? So we've got Q equals MC delta T, or that's CM delta T, as I've typed it out here. But either way, it's these four variables, okay? So Q, we've already seen, is the heat absorbed or released, depending on whether we're cooling it off or heating it up. C is the specific heat of a substance, how much heat, how much energy it takes to raise the temperature of the object or how much heat it gives up when it cools off m is the mass it's usually in grams and this delta t is the change in temperature and we usually use celsius degrees right um, to do measure the change in temperature so here's an example problem how much energy will it take to heat 500 milliliters of water from 22 to 100 degrees Okay, so the C of water, that's the specific heat of water, is 4.184 joules per gram per degree C. Okay, so this is our formula we're using. These are the four variables. We can know or figure out three out of the four variables. Okay, we know we're trying to figure out Q. We know what C is. It was given. We know that 500 milliliters of water equals 500 grams of water. That's our mass. And we know that the change in temperature was from 100 to 22. So this is going to be a positive temperature change, right? It went from 100 to, it started out at 22 and went to 100. So we, the final temperature minus the initial temperature is how we calculate the delta T. Put that all together, since Q is already by itself over here, it's pretty easy to do that. And we get this number. So it's a pretty big number, 163,176. So a lot of times we use kilocalories where we would divide this by a thousand, right? And use that. So this 176, when we're talking about thousands of calories or joules, I mean, doesn't really make that much difference. So 163 or 164 doesn't really matter what these last three are, right? It's, it's going to be uh, insignificant as far as the numbers go. And if we were talking about significant figures, this would be closer to the significant figures that we would be using anyway. Okay, so there's another problem we can do with this one. We're actually going to be doing an experiment on this one in class where we're going to be, we're going to be determining experimentally the specific heat of iron. And you're going to figure out experimentally these different things here. You're going to weigh the mass of the iron. You're going to figure out what the temperature change is. And you're going to figure out how much heat was absorbed by well in the experiment we're going to use water 
But for this problem, we don't have to do an experiment. We're just trying to figure out what the specific heat is. So we can know or figure out three out of the four things, right? We know what Q is, the 114. We're trying to figure out C. They gave us the grams. And the temperature changed to 50 to 24 going that way. So this actually gave up heat, right? So this technically should be a negative. We should have done 25 minus 50.4. But since we're just trying to figure out the specific heat, it doesn't really matter that much. We can just use these difference here. And we're just going to treat it as a positive difference. Okay. So one thing that um, students don't like to do that is actually pretty helpful to do is to solve this algebraically to get C by itself. That's what we're trying to find. So if we divide Q by M times delta T, we get this. That makes it easier to calculate and less likely to make a mistake. So it actually saves you time in getting the right answer the first time. So we plug in the numbers here, the 114, the 10 grams, and the 25 degree temperature change. Looks like this, so it's 14. Remember, I put these in parentheses, right? Because you want to divide by this product, not divide by 10, and then multiply by 25. That'll give you the incorrect answer. So try that on your calculator to see if I got it right. So it, the specific heat for iron is 0.449. That's pretty close to where it was on the chart. A little review here, specific heat. Oh, I gave it away. Oh, well. That's the definition. I looked at it and gave you the definition, right? That is what specific heat is. Okay, so which one of these is an example of chemical potential energy? Moon, car battery, compressed spring, roller coaster. Well, the only one that really makes any sense is the car battery, since I mentioned it in the video. Okay, so that's it for the video. So finish um, answering the questions below on the um, web assign, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.